Hey there, let's get into the festive spirit and see how we can use generative AI and mixed reality to create and display Christmas cards. My name is Lee Engelson. I'm developer relations lead at Avenard. I'm a Microsoft MVP in developer technologies and mixed reality, I'm doing a part-time master's degree in entrepreneurship and innovation, I'm published author in .NET um, development for to create augmented reality experiences for iOS devices, based in Manchester, UK, and I've got a wife, two kids, and two cats. So now uh, you know me a lot more about me than I probably do about you. Um, in Christmas themed talks before because I like combining technology and make it fun. That's how I love sharing technology and, and what I've learned and knowledge and I think is a great way to, to learn as well. So previously I've created image classification models that you can check out and how I did that that can help identify it between a tree and a regular tree and also real time image classification models, uh, image uh, detection, which can detect whether there's a naughty elf in a scene uh, in real time on an iOS device. So done them previously, might want to check those out if you're interested. So who are Avenard, my employer? We're actually a global IT consultancy, very, very big, 60,000 people across the world, over 26 countries. We're actually formed by Accenture and Microsoft 20 years ago, and we specialize in the Microsoft ecosystem of technologies. We have got over 70 Microsoft MVPs working for us, so there must be something in the water or something that attracts these people that are top of the game to come and work for us. That's more than any uh, other organization in the world, I believe. And we're an 18-time Microsoft Global Partner of the Year, so we, we know our stuff when it comes to Microsoft technologies. If you want to know more about Avenard or career opportunities, do reach out to me. Uh, it's kind of part of my role as a developer relations lead. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we're also, as well as this talk, we're doing a, a prize giveaway. We're trying to support the Festive Tech calendar, make sure it happens every year. And what we want you to do is um, post on LinkedIn or tweet to Twitter, tell us you, and share your passion for technology, tag in Avenard and the hashtag passion for tech, and uh, you'll be automatically entered into a prize draw. And at the end of the Fest of Tech calendar, I will draw a winner and they will receive this, this Lego set. So uh, last year's uh, winner was very, very happy. So we were very ha thrilled to be able to do this again this year. So keep an eye out for that. So back to what we're gonna to talk to today. So <clears throat> uh, this is kind of a nutshell of, of what we're gonna do, this very highly de detailed architectural diagram. We are going to use a technology, a mixed reality framework called Stereokit and run that on a create an app with it and run that on my oculus quest 3 headset and that's going to talk to Jack's chat gbt api to return back some text and it's also going to be talking to the dali api to return some images based on that text simples so really quickly if you don't know what uh, chat gbt is or open ai you happen to be living under a rock and um, then they have a user interface for it so you can type in a question or a sentence like this one uh, in a sentence, briefly describe a random Christmas scene that could appear on a Christmas card, and you might get a back a response like this. A snowy village scene, a glow with festive lights where families gather around a Christmas tree exchanging gifts and laughter. So it's very good at creating some original text based on your original prompt. Now DALI is slightly different, but again, from OpenAI, you provide it a, a prompt, and we've taken the prompt we got generated from the previous example, and then it will generate images based on, on your prompt that you provided with it. And here are just three sets of four images um, that it's generated. And because I've said, create a scene that's akin to what you would see on a, a festive card, greeting card, they look very, very similar to what you would see on, on greeting cards. And we will then be taking those and showing them in Stereo Kit, which I introduced now. Now, Stereo Kit is a mixed reality framework. I think it was originally generated by the uh, mixed reality team over at Microsoft. It's OpenXR compliant, which means that uh, if you get it running on one device, the chances are it will be able to run it on a Quest 1, sorry, Quest 2, a Quest 3, a Pico, a HoloLens, if they all um, support OpenXR uh, standards. Stereo Kit's got support for hands, so it can detect your hands, the gestures, the positions of all the joints and things like that, which way they're facing. It's got controller support, so you can, when you've got the controllers for whatever device, when you can detect the orientation and the button click, stuff like that. Importantly, it's got full color pass-through. Well, sorry, Stereo Kit supports pass-through, and the device I'm using has got full color pass-through, so we'll see that in the demo. Now, Stereo Kit has been built for productivity. By that, I mean, if you want to create a games engine from scratch, you might not want to use Stereo Kit. Stereo Kit has got a lot of uh, user interface built into it, so you can easily throw up a window with buttons and text input and radio buttons and sliders. So it's a really good 
way to create sort of, uh, productivity apps for that. Um, so it's really cool. It's been built with a really small footprint uh, and it takes very, very little code to actually deploy some uh, an experience onto your headset. And for that reason, it's been built with rapid development iteration in mind. Now, previously, if you're creating this sort of experience, it would take ages to compile, ages to deploy to your device. With Stereo Kit, it takes seconds to compile and seconds to deploy. And then if you've made a mistake or you want to make a tweak, you can recompile in seconds and redeploy. And if you don't want to do that to your headset, there's even a built-in simulator, which is fantastic to use. So you can just deploy to the simulator and then when you're happy with it, deploy. So it is a great way to get started in mixed reality because of the low barrier to entry um, and the, the easy on-ramp to, to learning is a great way to get into mixed reality. And I should mention, all this can be done inside Visual Studio and C Sharp, so you don't need to learn any new IDEs like Unity, any new languages. If you're a .NET developer, you're very much at home, and you, should, you already know a lot of the stuff you need to get this stuff to work. Um, Stereokit is super easy. It is this easy. If you go to stereokit.net, it shows you. You can just type in some commands, pull down some prerequisite uh, code, use .NET new templates, and you can easily spin up one uh, create one uh, programmatically using the CLI if you want and um, get it into, open it into this type of Visual Studio, if, this is what I do, and then deploy straight to the headset. And the actual code it takes is really, really minimal to run. So you'll see in the bottom right corner here, um, this is all that it needs to run using Stereokit, SK initialize, and then run. And then inside this run statement of this code is what happens every frame, I believe. So it's saying every frame draw this cube uh, using the default material at 0.1, which is effectively what, 10% uh, of a meter, so 10, 10 centimeters a cube in, in, in mixed reality. But we're gonna do something a bit more complicated than that. Uh, for more information about Stereokit, check out the website, loads of information on there, and check out the GitHub uh, repo as well. It is constantly being developed and improved, so it's worth checking out and following. Um, I'm not going to go through this slide because it just describes what we're going to do. I'll just demo it instead, and that will take us on to the demo. And this is where I will pause and then show you the demo and then maybe come back and look at the code, depending on how deep I want to go. See you in a bit. So this is the demo for the talk. This is using generative AI and mixed reality to create and display Christmas cards. That's just the cover slide for the talk, so we'll move that out of the way, don't need that. Um, and then we're using these technologies that I mentioned, Stereo Kit to create the mixed reality experience, OpenAI, because we are going to be calling both ChatGPT and DALI. First of all, this is the prompt I'm going to send over to ChatGPT API so I can get a description for my card. In a sentence, briefly describe a random Christmas scene that could appear on a Christmas card, not mentioning families. Uh, let's create a description and it will come and update this prompt here. The reason I say don't mention families is because when it tra Dally 2 tries to show people, it does look a bit weird. So here we go, what's come back with on a snowy winter morning a solitary cardinal perch on top a snow covered evergreen is surrounded by a bed of glittering red berries that sounds nice so let's create the images for that it's taking that prompt sending off over to dali and any minute now i should have images appearing just in front of me here let's move that out of the way i don't need that either uh, the other thing I can do is toggle, uh, they look nice, toggle pass through on and off. So this is very much the experience you'd experience with the uh, Quest 2, which didn't have full color pass through. Most people used it in virtual reality like this. But because the Quest 3 headset that I'm using has got full color pass through, I'll make full use of that and um, be able to see my environment whilst I'm interacting in mixed reality. So these are pretty good. Um, this is just a first version and you know some of these you would see on Christmas cards that's pretty impressive so we'll generate the prompt a new prompt and we'll go off and get some more images a blue twinkling night and white stars stars a horse drawn carriage Do you know what? that sounds great let's just create the images okay so we're off to a good start there's a nice images that have come back from Dali with a description come back from chat GPT. let's see what the new uh, images look like with the the snow covered uh, carriage or whatever it was blue night twinkling these are lovely a bit a little bit amateurish but you see things like this uh, in the Christmas cards don't you so that one's quite nice so these are pretty good 
Uh, and again, I can tweak this prompt. I don't have to use the prompt that's come back from, from ChatGPT. Just to prove what I mean is I can uh, clear that and I will say something like, um, happy, happy space turtle. Not Christmassy, I know, but just to prove that there's no smoke and mirrors going on uh, and uh, that exact prompt is being sent off over to um, Dali to generate the images and then return back and show in mixed reality uh, in stereo care. So let's see what this come back with, with and this will probably be the last one. Happy Space Turtle. Hmm, a little bit boring, but again, knew it wasn't going to be Christmassy. I could do that with two hands as well. I don't know why I keep using one hand all the time. So yeah, it's space turtle. Let's do one more. Let's do scene description. Uh, let's do another space one, uh, uh, Christmas one. I don't like that. A bunch of carolers beneath a starry sky. Snowman. Yeah, let's go for a snowman beneath a starry sky. And this is, again, a, a bit of fun with taking some pretty serious technologies, generative AI and mixed reality, using a bit of a fun use case, creating Christmas card designs. But hopefully you can see with this combination of technologies, there's lots of different use cases for, for this. You know, visualizing imagery, generating new imagery, move things around. Um, the other thing I could do is obviously move around uh, these images. I don't have to stay in one place. I've got this big 3D um, three-dimensional space I can move around in. I don't know why I'm, I'm staying in one place. Um, so yeah, let's put them over here this time. She seems happy. I'm not, I think I meant she was mentioned in the prompt. She snuck in there somehow, but never mind. And again, these are quite nice as well. Maybe not that one. That's a little bit scary, but this one in particular, I like. Um, this one I like, maybe that one. Um, space turtles uh, and yeah this is just one way you can combine um, generative AI and mixed reality uh, and together if you like that um, please follow me on YouTube Twitter LinkedIn TikTok I'll be doing more experiments in mixed reality and artificial intelligence thank you very much Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so if you enjoyed the demo, then you might want to look at the code. If not, feel free to go and get a mince pie or something like that. Uh, so we'll go look at the code real quick in case you're interested in how it actually works. If not, that's fine too. Uh, so when you create the, the project using the, the, the solution, using the project template, like I mentioned, you'll get two projects like this. I'm going to zoom in just, it might be a bit small on your screen. Uh, one, which is the general project and which is just the code that I will be uh, tweaking or showing you should I say and then it also creates this this Android one which I don't change the code for that uh, generally speaking and it that all that does is kind of repackage your other code it's so that it makes sure they can deploy onto onto your headset so it's good that way let's minimize that don't need that inside there is my program CS file and that is the important one so not many files in here uh, which is good, you don't have to jump around and navigate. So this is what's going inside Program CS. And uh, am I recording? Yes, I am. So I've got a load of things I initialize initially, as you do, uh, including a list of positions. Now these poses, that's a combination of a uh, position in 3D space, so your X, Y, and your, your Z coordinates, as well as the orientation that, or the rotation of, of that, whatever's at that uh, position as well. Um, so it's a combination of position and orientation. Then we've got lists of things like the strings for the image URLs, because when you get images back from DALI, what you don't get, you don't actually get the images, you get URLs or addresses to the images, and then you have to go off and, and download those. Um, that's what the API, the, the API returns. I've got some prompts that I use, uh, some textures, some sprites, don't, not going to go into too much detail about them. I've got my key here that I'm using when I send over and call. Um, open AI, but I'm not going to show you that. So here we go. Here's the main method. It initializes some settings, uh, adds a step up for the, the pass through. Without this, it wouldn't show the, the pass through by default, I don't believe. Uh, it just runs this initialize method. And then we are uh, initializing some other stuff. So when we turn on the um, virtual reality, version to turn pass you off you got that grid system on the floor the three lines of code do that these are setting the positions of the four images every time they're returned back from DALI 
So that's what that's doing. And then once we've set, done all this setup initialization, this is what runs every frame, I believe. So we're going to be drawing the logos. And by that, I mean the four or five big images we had at the beginning, one for ChatGPT, uh, OpenAI, and, and DALI, and, and, and StereoKit. Not a whole lot going on here other than we're declaring a window, or an empty window, so you don't get the chroma on the outside, and then drawing an image from, from the files then packaged along, doing that once for each of the, the um the, the logo images. Notice we're passing in the poses as a reference, and that means is as we're manipulating and moving those images, it's updating the, the underlying uh, position as well. So we're drawing the logo, so make sure we're doing that every frame. Let's go back, control minus to go back. Uh, then what we're doing is drawing the Christmas card window. Let's go see what that's doing. Again, creating a window and setting a position and the size of it, and then we're creating some labels on the on, inside the window. And Stereokit has got this declarative, uh, really an easy new, to use declarative way of uh, declaring and defining user interface. You don't have to drag and drop things. You can just say, put a label on the window, put it at this position, stuff like that. But the other thing that it does is, um, I really like how it both mixes both the declaration of buttons, which is that what this is doing. It's saying, put this button at this place uh, after this input, and with this text, but it's also defining what happens when you click that button, effectively like the event handler. So it's saying, show me a button that says create scene description. And when that's clicked, i.e. when there's, hence this if statement, then go and run this code on a background thread. And that's saying, take the scene prompt, the prompt that we've got, and send it off over to uh, Dali. Um, and then see what's going on in there. So this is the code that's going off to actually calling OpenAI. Now previously I have called OpenAI directly, but what I'm doing this time is using a, a NuGet package called OpenAI.net, I believe. And that's really neat because all I need to do is instantiate this client class, pass in the authentication, call it, and then take the results uh, and do whatever I want with them. Like I said, you don't get the actual images back. You get uh, URLs or, or, or uh, addresses to the images. So I need to make sure I go off and uh, I store these here and then later on I go off and, and um, download them. So that's what student, that method students in every frame, draw this window and it's doing it saying, create all this user interface on there as well. Uh, create another button here lower, later on and says, go and generate the images. And what's that doing is saying, take the prompt and go and this time in the background thread, Go and get the card images from DALI this time. Very similar call. Passing in my key, which you can't see is well held, hidden, and hopefully taking the results, which are strings of uh, addresses, storing them in a list. And then after that, I imagine what it does, it says uh, for each of those strings of URLs, um, go and download them. That's what this method is doing. Then store those as sprites, I believe, or textures, and then convert them to sprites afterwards. So it does that a bunch of times. And then we've um, got those images locally in memory, and then we can show them. I go back and minus a bunch of times. So then we've drawn the logos. Um, I've also got the pass-through window. That's really simple. That's just got a button that enables the pass-through. Not very interesting. And then I've got here a Boolean that says, if draw images, because I tend to say, don't draw the images. Why are you going off to make these calls? And once you've made these calls, then start drawing the images. Um, because I was getting like a race condition, I was getting a reference not found exception. But anyway, it's a bit of a hack. I could find a way around it if I wanted to. So if draw images, so I returned the information from the calls. Then for every card position, then uh, get me the position and draw me the uh, sprites number one at position number one, sprite number two, position number two, etc., etc., uh, and draw them onto a window with uh, no Chrome, hence this this window empty. Uh, and it's that simple. And it's also saying, isn't and that is in a nutshell what it's doing. Uh, so a bit of code to initialize stuff and then stuff it does every frame. And then that's all it's doing to go off to taking prompts, allowing you to generate new ones, going off and retrieving images from Dali and then showing them in mixed reality. And hopefully you can see just, um, without any drop, dragging or dropping, uh, with some declarative codes, a very, very simple code, you can create these sort of fabulous meshes of uh, mixtures of technologies, generative AI, 
in mixed reality. So that is the end of the code I'm going to show you. Hopefully not all coded out and hopefully that's not been too small and you can actually see it. But I will put that code somewhere that you can read it at your leisure if you want. So we'll probably pop back over to the code and see if I've got any more remaining slides. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Summary. So we've shown that uh, if you combine these technologies, Gentle Rye and, and Mixed Reality, they're amazing. It just shows you that Generative AI can be used for so many different things. Yes, we've used it in a very si silly way, but hopefully you can see the uh, how we could be used for different use cases and it's um, how simple it is to get started with and how adding the immersiveness of mixed reality brings uh, another angle to the whole thing, the whole way of experiencing those technologies and it's simple to get started with with Stereokit as well. The headsets like the Quest 3 have come down in price. You no longer need to spend three and a half thousand dollars for a HoloLens. You've got to get the be able to see your environment and put things around with you. You've got this Quest Now 3, which is about $500, uh, and I'm sure going to become more popular and down in price. I also want to impress upon you just how important it is to play and experiment with these things. If you've ever wanted to get involved in Gen AI or Mixed Reality, the barrier to entry is so low now, it's so easy to just experiment, try a few things, scratch an itch and see what sticks, just try it. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm on all the social medias at Lee Engelson if you want to find me and make sure that you enter the competition. Have a good uh, festive period. Bye.